Hello everyone, welcome. This is your first lecture in Mastering Docker course. My name is Ahmed, I work for Linux, and I will be an instructor in this course. Now before we start discussing Docker and how it is used in the IT world, let's discuss first the need for the existence of a tool like Docker. And this need stems from a buzzword or a popular term that has been around for some time now, which is DevOps. So what is DevOps? Now, before discussing DevOps or before knowing why DevOps existed, let's start discussing first software development methodologies. By software development methodologies, I mean the approaches that develop that developer teams use when they create new products, when they when they build new software. These approaches are like the design patterns. If you're a programmer, you will know what I mean by design patterns. It's just a pattern or a way or an approach that is that consists of a number of guidelines that can be used to achieve the final target which is delivering the full product to the client. So there are a lot of software development methodologies available among which is the waterfall, the prototyping, the spiral, the rapid, the agile and others. Choosing one way or one approach over the other for your next project depends on the type of that project rather than whether or not this is the absolutely better approach than the others. So whether you're going to use the prototyping, the agile, the rapid, the waterfall, depends on the type of project that you are intending to work in. Okay. And for the sake of this course, we are interested in the agile development approach. That is because it is one of the most popular approaches currently on the market. And it is currently adopted by a large number of developers around the world. And in order to give you a better idea about the agile development approach, we'll start by showing you a, contrast, a contrasting approach, which is the waterfall. Now, in the waterfall approach, as you can see from this diagram, and as the name suggests, the development process falls downwards through a set of stages or phases until it reaches the end point. So it starts by acquiring the requirements of the project or the product from the client. Then those requirements get analyzed models and business rules are created as a result after which you start designing and coding the models testing and integrating then finally the product is delivered to the operations which where it gets deployed installed or migrated support and maintenance are also part of this operation okay the problem with this approach is that once you continue a stage once you finish a stage of those you can never return back to the previous one so for example when you have the requirements from the client well written well documented and you move on to the analysis stage where you start building your models and business rules you cannot move back to the requirements like to add or remove one of them or change one of them you cannot do that if you go to the design and start actually writing code you can never get back to the analysis and change one of the models or one of the business rules that you have created once you complete one step of those you can never get back to the other this is what is meant by a waterfall in a waterfall you cannot you can never go upwards you always go from the top downwards until you reach the bottom or the end stage which is the deployment now such an approach now is not as popular of course as we said it is not as popular as the approach that we are going to that we're going to study next which is the agile approach because the world now is moving at a very fast pace, requirements are changing all over the time, and the development team must be able to adapt new changes the moment they happen and quickly integrate it to the current project or the current product. And that is where the agile approach comes into play. That is where the agile approach excels. In this model, the project is built through multiple short iterations each will take a week or a month, so it takes a minimum of one week, maybe two weeks, and a maximum of four weeks to make one iteration. So what happens inside this iteration? What happens is that the developers build a full functioning product, although it goes from the most basic and simple to the more complex towards the final product, which will be delivered to the client. However, the client is available at each iteration of those. Now, let's have a look at a sample iteration. The developers start developing, integrating and testing. Then they release a demo release of the product, just as we said, a very basic product with a very basic functionality, but it just works. It's just a demo release. It's just a manifestation of what has been built so far. Then they, then they take the client's feedback on this demo release, 
what needs to be changed, what needs to be integrated, what needs to be added, what needs to be removed, what needs to be fixed. They make those changes, they test, and then they come to the final stage of the iteration. Is all the functionality complete? Is this a fully functional product or do we need to make more changes? If yes, then it is released to the client and or released to the market, we sold or released to the market. If not, it's the, the, the iteration starts all over again, developing, integrating and testing, then another demo release and another feedback, then not another set of changes, then testing, then again and again. A product may take multiple iterations, multiple and multiple iterations until it comes to the final stage where it can be deployed or delivered to the client or, or released to the market. So in order to achieve such a quick iteration, in order to achieve such a way of software development, the development process must be as quick as possible. Any tasks that are involved in the development process must be done in the least possible time. And that is where the infrastructure needs for agile development arises. Now, because in agile methodology, the product is coded in sprints, as we said, each of which takes two to four weeks at most, this requires multiple development environments created as quickly as possible. Long time ago, in order to create a new environment, the developer would request one hardware server, which is a physical machine, and the operations team or the system administration team starts availing the required prerequisites on that hardware machine, like for example installing a database, web server, runtime libraries, and so on. But recently, or a few years ago, this was done through virtualization. Virtualization, of course, cut off a lot of costs and time spent in, develop in setting up a new machine because in virtualization, a very large machine with a, very, with a huge amount of resources is used to create a number of virtual machines. The, this host machine, or this sometimes called the hypervisor, abstracts the hardware. It abstracts the CPU, the memory, the storage, or the disks, the network. Every hardware on the machine is abstracted and distributed on a number of smaller machines called virtual machines, each of which is taking or is consuming part of those resources. And those virtual machines are completely isolated from each other. They cannot share resources, each of which is having its own set of resources that is not shared among other machines. But that still needed time and still needed the involvement of multiple groups and multiple teams. The developer team will ask the operations team to create a new virtual machine and avail resources once the operations team does that, they also need to install the prerequisites, as we have mentioned, the database, web server, libraries, or any prerequisites that the application needs. So the operation team also does that. And this takes, of course, not as much time and cost as developing on a hardware machine and having to avail another hardware machine each and every time a new environment is needed. However, it still involved a lot of time, effort, and cost. And that is where the cloud computing came into play. And we'll see about that in the next lecture, so see you next.